In this video, we will examine working with shapes in the new Mandala Maker 3. I will start by creating a new Mandala document. And then I will direct your attention to the upper left of the screen to the shape palette. The shape palette is our primary area for working with shapes. And at the top of the shape palette, we have the new shape button. Below that, we have the shape pop-up type selector. And below that, we have some attribute boxes. These attribute boxes will configure themselves based upon the shape that we select. The simplest action here is to press the new shape button. And when we do that, a new shape will appear on our canvas and it will have the type and attributes shown on the palette. So now I will click the new shape button and you will see at this time that creates a circle with a radius of 100. New shapes when they are created are always selected. Selected means that the shape is in a state in which we can alter its attributes. You can tell that the shape is selected in a few ways. First of all, on the canvas, these selection handle boxes appear. If you look in the upper right of the screen at the layers palette, you will see that our circle is uh, listed here as a uh, layer pane in the layer palette and that that pane is highlighted in blue in this situation and that also reflects the fact that the circle is selected. For a third check on selection we can look at the bottom of the screen in the task bar. In the task bar we will see that the selection text indicates that the circle is indeed our selected shape. With the selected shape you can alter its attributes. Now the circle has only one attribute and that is its radius. And I can control the radius of this circle from a few different places. First on the shape palette, I can do so from this attribute box. I can do that in several ways. First, I can drag the slider handle here, which will adjust, as you can see, the radius of the circle. Now, once I have clicked on this slider, uh, activating the control, I can then use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move the radius value one pixel at a time. So here I will press the right arrow and you will see that each time I do the radius increases by one pixel. When I press the left arrow key you can see that the radius decreases by one pixel at a time. I can also enter a value directly in the text box. I will double click to select the text that is currently in the box and I will type a new number and then press the return key. When I press the return key, the radius slider and the circle itself are set to the new radius that I entered. The attributes, such as the radius, have a range. If I should try to enter a value in this box which is outside of the range of the slider, for example, I'll enter 900 here, press return, you'll see that the radius is actually set to 680 because that is the extent of the range at this time. And you will see that that 680 radius creates a circle which is larger than my canvas, so it's as big as it would ever need to be. 
we can also adjust some of the parameters of the shapes and in the circle we can adjust the radius this way by dragging these selection handles if I place this as a drag action so if I place my cursor over the selection handle press and hold down the mouse button I can then adjust the radius by dragging with my mouse once we have the shapes attributes set the way we want them we can proceed to add another shape to our drawing we can do this in several ways if we allow the circle to remain selected and we press the new shape button we will create another shape that's exactly like the current shape because the settings of the shape palette are those of the currently selected shape so if I click new shape now I will create another circle it sort of looks like nothing happened on the canvas because the new shape exactly covers the other shape but if we look on the layer palette you'll see that there are now two circles the top one the new one is selected if we adjust the radius attribute you will now see that there are in fact two circles we can change this circle to a different shape simply by picking a different shape from the pop-up menu I will select a diamond now you'll notice that this shape doesn't look a lot like a diamond and this is because the attribute sliders maintain their previous settings so the length attribute here you'll notice is zero if I increase that length attribute we get a much more diamond looking shape the diamond has more parameters than the circle it has a width attribute and a length attribute it also has a rotation attribute that will allow us to rotate this shape these rotation boxes are a bit different than the other attribute boxes and we will discuss those more thoroughly in another video for the moment we'll just be aware that it is there now another way to add a new shape is to deselect the current shape first if I want to deselect this diamond shape I will simply click in the background of the canvas and the selection handles will disappear the highlight will disappear from the layer panel and I will be ready to add a new shape without a selection if I select a shape type before I add the shape a generic shape type will be created so I'm going to select the diamond shape again and you can see that now the attribute boxes have configured themselves and if I add the shape now by clicking the new shape button I get a diamond that looks a lot more like a diamond than the result we got from the previous operation so this is another way to add a shape and of course we can still change these attributes in any way that we want